This is the plate of Lindsay. She says her cat, Jack, was attacked by the defendant's unleashed dog. And now poor Jack has a broken leg. The defendant refuses to pay her vet bills, even though she's 100% at fault. And if she has to sue her for the $1,400 she's owed, then so be it. This is the defendant, Megan. She says one of her dogs escaped the grip of her nine-year-old, and he chased the plaintiff's cat up a tree. Once she got her dog under control, she offered to call the fire department, but the plaintiff declined, and the cat fell out of the tree. Dogs have been chasing cats into trees since the beginning of time, and she doesn't owe this plaintiff a dime. She's accused of fouling up a feline. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says that her poor cat was attacked by the defendant's vicious dog, and she wants money for vet bills to repair the broken leg. But the defendant says the plaintiff's cat fell out of a tree, and she doesn't feel like she's responsible. It's the case of not feeling fine. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Ms. Lindsay and Ms. Donna, represented here by Ms. Lindsay, you are suing Ms. Megan for $1,400 in vet bills that you believe she should be responsible for because her pet got loose. Tell me what happened. So it was March 11th, and I had just gotten a new kitten about three to four months prior. Jack, I've had him for about 10 years, maybe a little over that. And so we were both, uh, I was out sitting on my step and um, both cats were right in front of the step, not even two feet from me. Um, we were out having a good time for a little bit. And then all of a sudden this dog came charging into my yard and, um, he had the leash still attached, but the harness was off of one of his legs. And this child, who at the time I figured was between the ages of 8 and 10, had another big dog with him while trying to restrain the other dog. And um, the dog bulldozed right into my cat, and they both went tumbling and... The child was yelling to me, get the little cat inside, get the little cat inside. So I scooped up the kitten and put him inside and then went back to try and assist the child with getting the dog under control. In the meantime, Jack was trying to get up the tree. He couldn't get up the first two attempts. And then Megan came. And How far behind was Megan? She was a good distance behind. All of this had happened and... How, how many minutes, distance. was it minutes or seconds that passed from the say, first entry into your yard till the time Megan was there? I'd say it was a good two minutes. Okay. A minute and a half to two minutes, yes. Okay. The cat attempted to climb the tree, couldn't get up. And then on his second attempt, he did get up. The branch he got onto is only about five feet from the ground. Okay. So he was sitting up there and he was visibly upset the cat. Um, I tried to get him down. I couldn't because he was hissing at me. He was visibly like, hurt, obviously. And um, Megan had offered to call the fire department. I'm sorry. If it's now, five feet up, you could go like this. So why is anybody talking right. about... Okay. So right. the it, only reason it, you and, weren't um, taking the cat off is because the cat was hissing at you? He, oh, yes. And trying to scratch at me and right. bite at me because he was in clear pain. And that's why I say calling the fire department is kind of like cliche. Like you don't call the fire department when well, I, I certainly you... wouldn't call the fire department if the cat was five feet up. I might, I might have a flashback to cartoons if the cat is way <laughs> up, but I and won't come down after a certain amount of time. But, uh, right, I don't know. But I, have, I submitted pictures of the tree and you can tell that it's a very, you know, small tree right. There's the tree. All right, so the cat gets up there. She offers to call the fire department, and you do what? I declined. I right, and then what happens? It wasn't necessary to call a fire department. Um, finally, they got their dog harnessed back up, leashed back up. I believe we even did that 
or co- almost completed that before she arrived. And um, when they left, she said, you know, let me know. Should I call the fire department? And I said, no. And as soon as I realized that Jack had gotten down off the tree and ran into our shed, um, when I was able to catch him and get him into a carrier, I could physically see that he wasn't putting any weight on that leg at all. Um, he wasn't, you know, did you know your neighbor? Did you know, did you know, uh, Ms. Megan before this? So then what happens? You take the cat to the vet and what happens? So I took the cat to the vet. They did the x-rays. Um, his leg is clearly broken. I submitted that evidence as well. Oh goodness. Is this the cast they they put on the poor cat? Oh my goodness. He's got a cast. Yeah. And the cats keep changing color. Oh, is these socks that are over the cast? Oh, no, no, no. Those are cast. They had to be changed every week for eight weeks. And we had do you have an actual did you have an actual uh, X-ray picture that you wanted me to see? Yep. So there where that little red arrow is, it's where it's completely fractured. All right. Now, so that first bill, did she offer to pay any of it? Um, The first bill she did, she offered to pay um, half of it, which was two hundred and fifty six dollars and a few cents, I believe. And did she pay that? She did. She went down to the vet clinic that night and she did pay that portion of the very first bill. Um, So I contacted her and I said to her that, um, you know, your child shouldn't have been taking these two big dogs on by his own. It got loose and came in my yard and there's pictures that show how far my yard and where we were from the sidewalk. Um, and it just, I said, I believe that you should, you know, be responsible for some of that. And I sent those text messages as well. And, and what she, was her response um, to that? Her response in the police report and in the animal control report was that she was going to have no further. Okay. Um, All right. Let me talk to you and let me see your version of things, Ms. Megan. Go ahead. Basically what happened was we were at the house. Um, I had two kids and two dogs. All right. Um, at the time, one of the children was outside with the two dogs. One of the harnesses was on incorrectly. So I went to change the, fix the harness on the second dog. So we hadn't even left the house yet. Um, and the first dog got, the leash got loose. And so she took off. What's the leash got loose? Your kid let go? No, I actually had the leash. So while I was bending down to put, I was trying to fix the harness on the second dog. How old are your children? And I was just nine. At the time, they were nine and 11. Okay. And only the nine-year-old was outside with me at the time. So I bent down. So you are the um, one who let loose of the dog. I let go of the leash accidentally, and the dog took off. I didn't do it on purpose. I was trying to fix a harness while holding on to the other dog. That's what happened. Right. Um, so the reason it took me a second and, and where the story is a little skewed um, is simply that I took the second dog and put the second dog in the house. So my child was running after the first dog. I put the second dog in the house. How did the dog get after. out again? Because according to her, there were two dogs on her property. She didn't know about the second dog. The reason she knows about the second dog is because she came and found me on a walk. And at that point, I had gone back home. She says that when the attack happened, child. there were two dogs and your kid was trying to control two dogs. Your eight-year-old was trying to control. And that wasn't the case. The second dog was put back in the house and the second child was in the house with the dog. The 11-year-old and the other dog were in the house. The reason she knows I had two dogs is because after the incident, the younger one and I took the bigger dog, walked back to the house, got the second child and the second dog and went on a walk. Okay. Like we were planning on doing in the first place. Lindsay approached me, you know, 20 minutes later while we're coming home from this walk and said her cat was injured. So that part is accurate. That's how she knows I had two dogs. All right. Well, the second dog. Okay. So you pay for the half of the bill and everyone's happy with that. And then there are more bills. And then I guess she was asking you to pay for half of those. And you said no. And tell me your reasoning. Yeah. So um, because she was indicating that the dog had in some way attacked the cat, my biggest concern was that the dog in some way attacked the cat. So in going and paying for the vet bill, I I was verifying that the dog hadn't physically touched the cat. You know, there were no puncture wounds. There were no bite wounds. There was no indication. And that's definitely true, correct, Ms. Lindsay? Yeah. 
Right. So the yeah. issue is she feels that it's still a proximate cause. Your negligence at letting go of your dog is the proximate cause of the broken leg of the cat. It's still what we call the deciding factor. It is the reason it happened. If your dog hadn't A, escaped you, B, entered her yard, and C, chased the cat up the tree, which I realize it's, there's, there's, by the way, your dog is being a dog. Dogs have been doing this for thousands of years. <laughs> it's, we don't punish, the law doesn't punish a dog for being a dog. The law punishes the owner for their negligence. So the negligence would be that you let go of your dog's leash and your dog was essentially off leash, running into, right. you know, and that's a distance of how many houses are you away? It's a 10th of a mile. Yeah. Um, and so, so, I mean, my yeah. dog did get loose. I yeah. won't argue with you on that at all. And it was an accident. It was not on purpose. Right. Um, no, everyone it knows intended. it was an accident. You know, that part I totally understand. Right. Which is why I entered into it in the first place. Um, and, but then and what, so, but then what, but then you wouldn't pay any of the others. Why is that? My impression really was that when I went to the ambulatory clinic and paid that the cat's leg was broken. And so I paid half of the cost to get the leg fixed and Lindsay declined and he helped to get the cat out of the tree. So at some point, you know, I, and then the cat ran away. So when the cat came out of the tree, the cat ran away. So I, I quite frankly, I just felt as though at that point she had declined my help to get the cat down. And so at that point it was kind of her responsibility to take care of the cat once it's in the tree. With Okay. Every, everybody seems to be really hung up on proving whether or not the cat broke its leg coming off the tree versus broke its leg trying to get up the tree versus broke its leg from uh, your dog falling on it. I don't care. The law doesn't care. And uh, because the only question for me is, but for your dog getting loose from you, but for that negligence, and that's why it's called negligence, is there's no intent in negligence, but for that negligence, this wouldn't have happened. And I do find that you have to pay the bills. Now, you guys are working out paying out half, but unless her cat is half responsible, there's no reason why the, she would have to pay half. It's totally your negligence. So I am going to order the medication, the remaining vet bills, including the half of the first one, because she's changed her mind. She feels like you didn't, you didn't stick to the deal, so why should she? Um, and the money's for emotional distress. Explain that. So January of that year, I was diagnosed with severe anxiety and panic attacks. Um, and my cats were the only thing that were like helping me get through. When this happened, I was devastated. My medications had to be changed and upped. Um, the new kitten was actually to help me get through all of that because they suggested, you know, um, trying to get another animal that I could have with me to sensory, like, touch and feel instead of worrying so about So you were panic. suffering from that before because at the time of this attack, the new kitten existed. Yes, I had just gotten her four months before. So when this happened, every ride to the vet, I either had to have somebody come with me or help because I'd get debilitated just driving. I'd, my panic attacks would just come on. And I just feel like okay, after this, reaching out to Megan so These are not the kinds asking, of... I, I realize that they cause it causes great emotional distress to have a pet. I've been in your position. I, I had my cat eaten um, and the cat didn't make it by my neighbor's dog. And, uh, and that's horrifying, and I know that. And it happened in front of my kids, um, and they were horrified. It, it, it was, it's a horrible thing. It's part of pet ownership, unfortunately, all these accidents. And, um, but they're not the kind of cases where you get emotional distress. Uh, how do you measure one person's emotional stress over the other person's emotional distress? They're considered property. And so it's damage to the property. That's what pets are considered, even though we consider them our children. Um, so I am going to order her to pay the vet bills as well as a medication, but I am not ordering emotional distress. So that's a total judgment in favor of the plaintiff in the amount of $1,076.71. Good luck. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. So the plaintiff prevails to the tune of $1,076. Megan, the defendant, let me ask you uh, your reaction to the judge's decision. You've you got to pay a thousand. I completely understand, bucks. and I'm sorry that it happened. I'm sorry that the cat got hurt. It's a shame. I know this was the first time you'd met your neighbor too, as well, right? You had, yeah, you didn't yeah, know her before. Yeah. What a tragic way to meet your neighbors. Um, anyway, Lindsay, let me ask you. Uh, 
you know, how, how tough a decision was it to, for you to file a suit against your neighbor? It was very tough. I mean, I've never met Megan. Yes, we live um, about two streets apart. But I never would want to put that burden on anybody. But the financial burden couldn't come all on to me. All right. By the way, finally, how is the cat today? He's doing great, thankfully. He's doing really well, really well. All righty. Well, good for you. And you are going to get uh, that, that bill paid. So congratulations. So, Doug, this is actually a really interesting legal case because it involves something in the law we call causation. And that means, in this case, that the dog was out of bounds by being off leash chasing this cat up a tree you could understand why a cat would climb a tree to avoid the dog and then after that it's foreseeable that when a cat is up there scared the cat could fall so it's all connected and that's why the plaintiff won when someone brings a case to you can they ask for you to rule that the case be dismissed without prejudice so they can take it to another court if you rule against them <laughs> No, that kind of defeats the purpose of coming here, doesn't it? Right. You know, when the parties not come with arbitration, here, which is yeah. Really, but I mean, yeah. that what, it, it, in any court, I mean, you have when you come to the people's court, what you've agreed to is binding arbitration. This is how every court show works. Every court show copied ours because ours came first. So thanks for joining us. We will see you for the next session of the People's Court.